Good morning and happy Christmas to you all. The day has finally arrived. It's great, isn't it? And wherever you are, however you're going to celebrate Christmas this year, let me wish you a real sense of peace and joy as we spend time together today marking the birth of Jesus. And in a year so dominated by worry and fear and so much bad news, this is the best news of all time. That God has loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that you and I could be free. Despair has been turned to hope and darkness has turned to light. So as we worship from our various locations today, I trust that you sense the unity of the church. The church of Jesus here in Largs, but also the church of Jesus all across the planet as we lift up the name of Jesus across the nations. He alone is worthy. Let me read you the story of how it all began. I'm going to read from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 to 14. And I'm reading from the New International Version. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven. And on earth, peace to those on whom his favour rests. Hallelujah. What a great story. What a great happening. Something that would change the world forever. We're going to worship today and we're going to start as we sing along with that most Christmassy of all Christmas carols. O come all ye faithful. And that will be followed immediately by a new song written by the band Rend Collective but sung for us today by our good friend, Alan Campbell. It's called, Today is the Saviour's Day. Oh 
a frost on the ground, but a fire in our soul. Today everything can change. There's a flame in my heart that never grow cold. Today is the Savior's day. Though the path may be covered in virgin white snow, the starlight will guide the way. And the angels are singing, we are not alone. Today is the Savior's day. Stranger, there's room at the end. Let no one be turned away. Let the bygones be bygones and healing begin. Today is a Savior's day. Today is a Savior's day. Well, let's pray together, shall we? Shout for joy, the whole earth and everything within. Rejoice, for light has come into the world. The mountains sing, the seas resound to the praise of your name. Salvation, once promised, is now here on earth. The angel song ring in the air. A child has been born, hallelujah. The saviour of the world is here. Thank you, God for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you came. Holy Spirit, won't you teach us more about his lovely name? And it's in his name that we bring our thanks and our praise this Christmas morning, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I don't know if you are a big sender of Christmas cards. Uh, Ali and I have really got out of the habit uh, over the years, we've cut down uh, with the advent of technology. We have found many ways to stay in touch with friends and family near and wide throughout the year. And of course, plus being Scottish, the, the cost of stamps does put me off somewhat. Well, in a moment, we're going to see a, a Christmas card of sorts. 
sent by different friends of BEC, sending their greetings. And I'm sure you'll enjoy it, especially the efforts made by Jonathan Lamb from Keswick Ministries. Stay tuned for that. And then stay watching for a short advert, which I'm sure you'll have seen countless times this Christmas season. Hi there, Gordon, and to everyone at Brisbane Evangelical Church. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to bring a Christmas greeting. I want to wish you all a very happy Christmas and a blessed 2021. Let's hope that it's better than what 2020 was. In the Bible, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15, it talks about the greatest gift of all at Christmas. It says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, which of course is the gift of Jesus. God bless you, everyone. Hi, it's Laura and Carol from SU Ayrshire. We just want to say a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year when it comes. May you know God's blessing in this season. And we want to say thank you for all your support. Merry Christmas! Well, greetings to everyone at BEC. Uh, my name's Jonathan Lamb, so I thought I'd be a shepherd. This is genuine Palestinian shepherd's gear and remind you of the great story in Luke chapter 2, the shepherds who obeyed the message from the angels who went to worship Jesus and who then told everyone else what they'd seen and heard. That's my three-part sermon. Have a wonderful Christmas. God bless you all. From the whole team at CSW, I would love to wish everyone at Brisbane Evangelical Church a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Greetings to our sisters and brothers at Brisbane Evangelical Church. On behalf of St John's Church in Largs and Cumbry Parish Church, allow me to wish you hope, peace, joy and love as we prepare to welcome the Christ Child. God bless you all. Merry Christmas. Gzuar Krishlinian. And a Happy New Year. Gzuar Vitinari. Uh, we hope you have a Covid free, maskless, church full, everybody singing, God glorifying 2021. Merry Christmas from us all here in Shkod. Hello everyone. Graham McWilliams, Minister at St Columbus Parish Church in Largs and also Fairley Parish Church. Wishing all our brothers and sisters in Christ at uh, Brisbane Evangelical Church a uh, blessed Advent and Christmas. And it is in the bleak midwinter, it is freezing at the moment, but uh, we smile through as God rains his blessings upon us. Stay safe, God bless, Merry Christmas. Our precious family in Largs, we're so happy to share the joy of this Christmas with you this year. God may fill your hearts with his joy and enjoy this simple and precious Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! I'm Pastor Tasha. And I'm Pastor Steve. And, and from, from all, all of us at, at Large Church, Church of the Nazarene, Nazarene, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And every blessing in the coming new year. On behalf of everyone here at St Columbus Scottish Episcopal Church in Largs, I wish you a joyous and holy Christmas and a healthy and happy New Year to all our friends at Brisbane Evangelical Church. Merry Christmas. I want to thank you on behalf of Mission Evasion Fellowship for all your prayers and practical support, not just this year, but throughout the years. May the Lord bless you and may your Christmas be full of joy, happiness and peace. God bless. I gave my sister a really terrible haircut. What if I'm on the naughty list? Relax. After this year, Tesco says there is no naughty list. So take that, Kay. You deserve it. I may have bought too many loo rolls. So did I. And me. I once forgot to sing happy birthday when I washed my hands. I didn't teach the physics or maths. Oh, Gio! 
choreography? Guys, it's fine. There's no naughty list, so tuck in. I didn't donate to Captain Tom. What? No. I did do a charity bake-off. Tagora. I might have gone on holiday. Oh, Santa. Well, have a mince pie. And Britain, you have all the treats you want, OK? Because this year at Tesco, Ooh. there is no naughty list. No more naughty list. What a brilliant idea. The Tesco marketing team have, have really struck gold this year with this advert. They've tapped into the mood of the nation who've just had to put up with so much in 2020. And I, I confess, it made me chuckle, the idea that someone confessed to buying too much toilet roll or to forgetting to sing the words of happy birthday while they washed their hands. That really registered with the nation because we've all been through this COVID-19 marathon together. Everyone watching that advert gets it. And then the most shocking confession of all. The guy who says he didn't donate to Captain Tom. Well, that draws the most disapproval of all, doesn't it? It's a really funny advert. I really liked it. But whether they knew it or not, those clever marketing people at Tesco, those executives sitting in their office, they also point us to the real Christmas story. Let me explain. You'll remember just a, a couple of weeks ago we read this verse together from Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 when the angel spoke to Joseph and said, She will give birth to a son and you're to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. At this time of year we often focus only on the first part, the birth at Bethlehem. But we forget the second part, the cross of Calvary. We see the arrival of Jesus, but we forget the reason for his coming. Because he will save his people from their sins. The cross would cast a shadow over the crib. And from the moment the baby Jesus first filled his lungs with Bethlehem's air, he was destined to give up his last breath some 33 years later, hanging on a Roman cross. What's that got to do with Tesco's Christmas advert, I hear you say? Is that what you're saying? Well, let me tell you. Let me read you one more verse, this time from the New Testament book called Romans, written by the Apostle Paul to the Christians in Rome. That's where it gets his name. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. That is Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No naughty list, do you see? Because of Jesus coming into the world, the one who will save his people from their sins, there is now no condemnation from God for us if we will believe and trust in Jesus. No matter what the best present you gave or received this year, you will never top God's greatest gift, the gift of freedom. For Tesco, it's a marketing ploy, but it doesn't actually deliver in reality because people will still do things wrong. People will still behave badly. People will still sin. And before Christmas Day ends, children and adults will be naughty. But when it comes to God, this is no marketing ploy designed to sell stock from the shelves. This is a cast iron guarantee of freedom from our sins. Because Jesus came, we can be free. We can have our slate wiped clean. We can start over just as if we'd never sinned. No more naughty list. No condemnation. And how will that change us? How will we live differently because of this wonderful gift that God gives to each one of us in Christ Jesus? Well, it means that we can live more free. 
We're not imprisoned by our past. We're not consumed by shame and regret any longer. It means that we can live more gratefully, waking every morning, knowing that no matter what things we get wrong throughout the day, we can come to God and ask for his forgiveness and know that he is faithful and just and he will forgive us. Not based on how good we are, we aren't, but because Jesus came. Why? To save his people from their sins. We should be grateful and forever thankful that he came. It means that we should live our lives with more consideration, more understanding of others when they get things wrong. Jesus was born and lived and died to save us from our sins and so we can be forgiven. And so we, who have been forgiven much, should go through our lives by forgiving others when they cut across us and upset us. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Now I have nothing against Tesco and their marketing. In fact, their mini potatoes with bacon and cheese have been a, a massive hit with me this Christmas season. But given the choice between their no naughty list which promises much but really doesn't deliver in reality. Given the choice between that and uh, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, that promise of God from Romans chapter 8, there really is no contest. This Christmas, see the baby in the manger, but also see the man that he became on the cross and give thanks. Amen. Let's pray together again. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. He is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He is named Emmanuel. God is with us. In this tiny baby, in this vulnerable child, we find our light, our joy, our comfort, our hope. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Our loving Heavenly Father, through the life and death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, we have been set free. Free from the power of sin that leads to death. Free to follow the leading of your Holy Spirit. Free to love you with all our heart and soul and strength and free to worship. Thank you that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the potential which was birthed in Bethlehem, which reaches us even today. To you alone, life-giving God, belongs all praise, all honour, all glory, all blessing, now and to the end of time. Amen. Our closing song is one that we cannot leave without hearing. I think it's some kind of law at Christmas or something. So a very happy Christmas to you from everyone at BEC. Please stay safe. Enjoy the time that you're able to spend with your loved ones, whether in person or through technology. We close with Hark, the Herald Angels Sing. God bless you.